So welcome back YouTube. <clears throat> Today, you can see I've got uh, garage full. So if you've been following, I've been uh, doing chassis legs on my Evo. So I'm going to show you what we're on with today. Hey. Is doing Scooby. So this has just had an engine built. Uh, it's an EJ207, which comes in the late version sixes. This is actually a brand new crate engine, EJ207. How identical except for one breather is all that's different. So it's got the version six heads which have been reworked. Nothing fancy, just new, you know, new seals and guides, etc. We put a really nice inlet plenum on <coughs> because the old one had got flaky paint, powder coated all of the uh, radiator shrouds and cowls, etc. New timing belt kit, uh, Roger Clark stopper head gaskets with the roger clark 11 mil uh, of the extreme or they're not extreme pro or the, they do extreme and extreme pro these are just normal extreme good enough for what we want we're not running big power it is literally standard power this car so yeah it's uh it's been built with good parts and what i will show you underneath is trevor's literally done the work on this while i've been doing the evo but uh yeah we oil surged it at cadwell park so we oil pulled it in the heads so you see that's an iag competition spec aluminium sump as opposed to the standard impressor now that's a proper bit of kit comes with uh proper baffle probably overkill really for a standard car but if i ever take it on track that should protect me so i've drained the oil got the bucket under there See if we can actually just have a quick look at general condition under the car. As you can see, it's it, it, you know this car is really a really nice car. There's no rot, no rust, etc. Uh, so it's had one oil change. It's now had a second oil change. Genuine silver black filters, and now I'm going to screw this off. And this is the first of a full synthetic oil it's going. Now the oil of choice is we're going for full fat CFS 1040. Now some people reckon 1050, depends if you're going on track. I won't be going on track for a while so I'm just going to run it on 1040. Uh, this is Miller's competition fully synthetic, low friction, triple ester. Seems decent so get well. So apparently on these you have low, full, and I believe if I read in the manual they're correct for hot and that one's cold. I will show you that in the owner's manual. Now what I am going to show you is this car, when we built the engine, we decatted it. Now, more air out, more equals more air in, equals we need more fuel. Now, it's obviously these ECUs run the, uh, as standard, they should do with fuel corrections. However, my car has been fitted with, excuse it being crudely in here, a G Ready E managed. Now, each one of these airflow adjust it's basically linked in through the airflow meter it, it, you're basically fooling the ECU and telling it you want a bit more fuel so when whoever's mapped this will have mapped this at certain RPM set points so the later RPM set points are getting a bit more fuel up now what I have noticed even on 99 run fuel I'm getting I can visibly hear 
some pinking. Now that's not good. Vi audible pinking uh, is bad. Even pinking non-audible is bad. So what I am going to do just temporarily uh, till it can, I've got a link ECU ready to go on this car. I am just going to adjust the top end of the set points just to richen the fueling up, which would be that that and that so it'll be a clockwise motion but like I said these are a bit old at really a bit crude G ready manage but yeah just going to give that a, them a quick tweak so why I'm doing this is obviously shut this up so I can go out beeping is when you're more susceptible to get pinking when it's lean now the only reason I can think this because it never pinked before we put the decat on is it's running lean so as a temporary measure, like I said, I'm just going to just give this a slight tweak up and uh, hopefully that should richen the mixture up temporarily until I put the link on uh, and hopefully it should stop the pinking. So I am not daft to keep driving a car when it's pinking, but if it's a temporary measure, just tell us what the link over, happy days. Uh, I will put the wide band on. And check it but for the time being this is gonna suffice this isn't obviously scooby or even related however what i do get asked a lot is if i will strip clean and test injectors now i originally started off i will show you uh, here we go start off doing the petrol ones now i, I did that for a long time uh done a few constantly getting asked if i do diesel ones so with me getting asked in a lot for that I decided I'd buy the equipment to test so these I've actually just checked all these now what I am doing is stripping and cleaning them now the do strip uh, as far as there's no like solution or anything you run for them to clean them as far as I'm aware it's just strip all the injection nozzles off the top as you can see you can see which ones I've done so that's actually another injector the guys fetched asked me to check so i'm just going to show you now how we strip these down and uh, clean them i'll tell you what i have just found guys i found this uh, wonderful little uh, gadget on my on my uh, camera which keeps it and it actually follows me about how oh, cool is that uh, let's get these injectors stripped and see what's in them so as you can see here guys, that's my injector tester. We'll get back to that in a while. Some injectors, this is the first set I've done which are left hand thread. <clears throat> that's that cracked. So this is the injector we've actually just took to bits. Why am I now? mugging you off it's not that's one i've already done confusing myself right so this is the one we've took to bits now what you do normally you have to hold the pintle down when you strip these for the first time hold the pintle and the, the nut just spins so obviously i need to go opposite way because it's opposite thread now i've stripped these so i know how these go to bits but i'm not so i can just literally take these to bits so in the majority of diesel injectors we get we take that top off that's basically like the locking cap don't really do much but hold everything under tension right so what you have is this outer and you have a pintle like a needle inside of these so it's your injection needle and if you actually look guys you should be able to see little, them little locator pins you have to be very careful of them because you can lose them very easily very easily so I've got both of mine here, nice and uh, steady. So pretty much there's nothing else, that's it. If the electronics on these go, uh, 
I'm not even sure if you can rebuild them if you can buy a new electronic part. But uh, right, so there's a spring here. I'll take that spring off. Right, so yeah, that's your injection needle into your cap. Now that, if you look, you can see how I'm pulling at that, and it is very very tight. Now that is what carbons up. And they have on the top, they have like six little, six or eight different on injectors, little injection holes on the top. So, if I can, bloody hell, that is tight. Oh. It's the tightest one I've had. That's not going to be doing it any good, is it? There you go. And that's what that looks like. I mean, they, they do vary on different injectors, but the principle is the same. Sometimes you just have little short injection nozzles. Then you have like a double packer in the middle and then spring, spring on the opposite side of a packer. So I'm going to clean this up. All it involves is first, I just scrape all the shite off. Get, get it all off. And I do like to soak everything. I do clean these, clean them in nothing but petrol. So you can see, look, look at all the, sh the carbon and shit comes off. So yeah, I'm not going to waste your time cleaning this. It's just clean, bit of emery, uh, bit of red scotch, clean it up nice and just build back together. So I will show you just piecing it back together and just a mess. I will show you guys. You, you just saw how hard that was to come out. So by the time I've cleaned all the tips, soaked everything in, and you can see now that literally nice and clean. So again, reverse, just case of basically line your pins up. You can see there's, there's a bit of spring tension on there now. So same again, hold the top down, slot the pintle cap over, but you have to be like, uh, you're like interchange. So get your finger just to push the pressure down. So this machine, let's see it here. This is like a hydraulic pump with a gauge. So this is how I put the uh, fuel pressure in there. And what I do, you can just see it here, this machine replicates the car. So this, like I said, replicates the car. So let's give it some electric, nice and gentle. There she is. So I'll turn it on. It's already set now, we're on Bosch. So you'll probably not see it from there, but it's on Bosch, non piezotronic And I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a solenoid going now. So don't know if camera will pick it up, but you'll get these. As we go, what you should do, you should see a pattern. That's a lovely injector, is that? Just having a, a view and uh, See you next time. Hopefully not as boring as doing a set of uh, old manky carboned up diesel injectors. So uh, catch you next time, guys.